Let's say that you have a large to-do list and you feel like you're drowning in it. Or maybe there's a task or two that are just really big and so you keep putting them off because you're a little bit overwhelmed about it. In this video, I'm going to share some ideas that might take the pressure off and make things just seem more doable for you in this situation. This video is a part of a series about focusing and getting stuff done. So have a look around for the other seven videos if you want to know more about this topic. Imagine you've just been given the job of eating the world's largest pizza by yourself. Seems really daunting, right? And if you just put eat world's largest pizza on your to-do list, uh, it, the task will probably be just weighing on your mind and your soul sitting on your shoulders. You might be inclined to put it off because it just is too much, it's too hard. In this scenario, where you got like a huge task to do and you feel like you can't get your head above water, try reducing the massive project down into teeny tiny parts and try to be as specific and as small as possible. Often, large daunting tasks just take a long time, but the process might not be complicated. So if you think about it, eating the world's largest pizza uh, is exactly the same as eating one, one slice of pizza. It's just taking longer. So breaking the project down into very small tasks that are easy to do will make it seem more attainable to you. You'll be more likely to start and you'll feel more successful along the way as well. So in this fictional eating the world's largest, largest pizza scenario, uh, you could decide to break it down in a couple of ways that I can think of. You could decide, okay, I'm gonna give myself the goal of eating at least 20 slices of pizza every single day, minimum. Or you could decide, okay, I'm gonna sit down every day at nine, 12, three, six, and nine, and try to eat as many slices as I can when I sit down and work on it that way. So uh, that way you can tick off after every slice of pizza you eat, or you could check, oh, I completed the task after every single time that you sit down to eat. When you think of eating the world's largest pizza as one huge task, that is hundreds and hundreds maybe even a thousand steps, impossible. Uh, but in the case of eating 20 slices a day, you've gone from hundreds of steps to 20. And if you scheduled times to sit down to eat, you've narrowed it down to five tasks. So 20 tasks and five tasks is a lot more doable than hundreds, right? So the next time you have a large project that you've been putting off because just starting and even like getting through it just seems just, it's too much, uh, try sitting down and um, just looking through it, thinking about how you can break it down into very specific and as small a task as possible and itemizing those out. And now that you've broken it down into very little, easily done chunks, uh, see if it makes a difference and you are able to start doing it and make a lot more progress on finishing the project. In this scenario, I'm gonna give you the project of organizing and cleaning a room that is entirely cluttered with boxes. In this case, it's also a very large project, but it's a lot more of a complicated process than eating the world's largest pizza, which is just the same thing over and over and over again. There's a lot of unknowns because you might not know what's in the boxes. You don't know what's gonna you're gonna do with it, and it's, you might find it a lot more difficult to break it down in terms of tasks. So, when you have a large project that is 
also very complicated or there's lots of unknowns, it might be best to make this job smaller in incre increments of time. So think about making your time smaller instead of making the task list smaller. Think about the story of the tortoise and the hare. Instead of making yourself get the job done in a day or a weekend like the hare, uh, which is an approach that you might be more inclined to procrastinate from or not schedule it because life gets in the way. We're going to be like the tortoise, so slow and steady is going to win the race in this case. So think about a small amount of time that you're going to spend on this project regularly. Uh, and lowball yourself here. So you need to be completely comfortable with the amount of time you're coming up with. So it could be five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20, if that feels right for you. But you have to think, oh yeah, easy, I can do that. You can also come up with an increment that you're going to work at this. So you might, if you pick 10 minutes, you might, decide to do that every single day if that works for you or two or three times a week whatever certain days a week whatever works for your life and when you go to do this task regularly you're gonna set a timer but for whatever amount of time that you've picked you're gonna fully focus for that amount of time and when the timer goes off you have the option now you can choose to just drop everything and walk out of the room, or you can choose to also keep going and do more if you're really feeling it. And if you find that you're not doing what you agreed upon with yourself regularly, uh, then either reduce the frequency or reduce the amount of time per session and see if that makes a difference. So if you agreed upon five minutes but you find that going down to two or three minutes is more likely that you'll do something, that's what you gotta do, right? This tip is great for when you have a long to-do list of different things. It's another tortoise-like approach, but instead of making time smaller or your tasks smaller, uh, you're narrowing down your expectations. Take a bit of time the night before or in the morning to think about your upcoming day and uh, come up with a to-do list for that day with only three things on it. They're the most important top three things that you're going to do that day. Once you've done them, of course, sometimes there's extenuating circumstances and life happens, but let's say the stars have aligned, you've done your top three, uh, then you can keep doing things, of course, but anything else you do is basically a bonus. You might find through trying this out that three isn't the best number for you, so maybe four works better. For myself, I don't really do this every day, but when I do, I know I've just figured out that two is the magic number for me, so I always pick two instead of three. This process of picking three priorities will relieve pressure that you might be putting on yourself and it will set yourself up to be more successful. And that's because if you're always working from a long to-do list, you're probably continually adding things to it and you will never be done. If you focus on getting the three things done, then you will likely be successful at completing what you set out to almost every single day. When you try out one of these ideas, I think a very important component is to create some sort of physical re representation of your smaller goals. So this could be a pen and paper list, Maybe something digital on your computer or your phone will work best for you. Or uh, maybe you're the kind of person who wants a colorful chart or a calendar that you can cross off or color in and put a sticker on. Whatever floats your boat. I think it should be something that you can mark off as done. So I don't think digitally erasing a task has the same effect. 
you should be able to see that you've crossed it off or marked it as completed after it's done. And the reason why I'm suggesting this is because of dopamine. When we experience even the tiniest amount of success, our brains release dopamine, which makes us feel good. And when our brains release dopamine, our bodies want more dopamine. So that means we're more likely to behave the same way in the future. So by breaking down projects, by making our goals smaller, or our time smaller, or our expectations smaller, you're increasing the frequency of those dopamine hits. So crossing something off on a list or putting a gold star on a calendar just brings more ceremony and commemoration to your success. And it's like you're walking across the stage at, with a graduation gown on to get your diploma every time you mark something off as finished.